big warm open group welcome, Fernando Garcia Valesco. And thank you for the translation. <laughs> used 
to using millions of personal computing computers to, to billions of uh, personal devices, mobile devices. The type of data that we use from structured to non-structured, the massive amounts of non-structured uh, data, and the speed at which we move in these systems. We are going from static applications to dynamic services. We are going from rigid infrastructure uh, systems in which we need to adapt our programs and our, our uh, solutions to these platforms, the standard platforms that we have in each customer. And we are moving then to an, an elastic infrastructure that we can provision and deprovision in a fast way. And then we are also reactive, moving from reactive security to cope with the situations that we have uh, to suffer at any point in time to a very proactive uh, situation in which we need to be ready to deal with uh, the situations that we know that are happening from everywhere regarding the protection that we need for every uh, organization. So this is a perfect storm, a perfect storm in which we have new challenges, in which we need to deal with all the digital disruptions that demand this transformation for this, uh, for this survival of the organi organizations. And we need to be able to gain insights from the interactions of all these trends that we are talking about. And it's not only IBM talking about this. There are many organizations, many IT providers, and of course, many market analysts that are talking about the same things. So here we have uh, the study from the special report of Gartner Group. Gartner Group, in the, in the document of Nexus of Forces from 2014, is telling us that uh, there is a set of converging and reinforcing forces that are redefining the delivery of IT. And these four trends that we are talking about they have uh, scenarios which are individually uh, centric, they are massively connected, they are rich in information, and they are happening at global scale. But the key of this uh, transformation is that uh, is based in the customer. The customer is driving these changes at the same time. And we also have IDC, this consultative firm, is talking also about the ICT industry third platform. And this third platform that probably started uh, also at the time of the mainframe and the terminals, and then it was the second platform that was talking about the client serving computing and the internet. Now, with these platforms that are happening every 20, 25 years, we are in the, in the midst of the third platform, the platform of cloud computing, analytics, big data, social and mobile computing. So the CIOs are suffering this uh, situation in which they have to change from information to deal with innovation, in which they have to change from system to services, and they have to change IT agility with uh, business agility. So this disruption is going to be present in the next decades and it's going to be probably responsible for around 40% of the revenue of all the ICT market. So this confluence of, of these four trends is forcing to emerge and impact a new solution development. We are having to deal with different data sources. We need sensors. Uh, we are using data structured and unstructured. We are dealing with customer conversations. So imagine how important it is today to analyze all this. Imagine what it will be, for instance, in the next general elections that we are having in UK the next month, or in Spain the next month. Or imagine how, impact, how big the impact can be for mobile telecommunication operators when you have all these social interactions or these conversations that may be in Twitter where you may be facing with customers that are disgruntled because of uh, the way in which the mobile operator is, is working. And you need to analyze that data. You need to be able to, to see if, if you can really cope with the situation of, the, of those users which are not uh, happy with the service. And you need to be able 
to see how you can integrate all those conversations in the way that you are dealing with your activity or with your systems that need to enhance that service to the users. So we need to be able to provide services which can be accessed from anywhere, with services that can collaborate in different uh, scenarios, and with uh, information that has to be turned into insights for each of the business areas that are dealing with those business services to the users, and that can be uh, requesting uh, systems information and can be requesting elastic infrastructure at any point in time without following the traditional procedures. And here uh, you can see uh, statistics of how this is impacting uh, the CIO organizations. And this is the result of an IBM summit that uh, was reaching more than 1,000 uh, executives and more than 5,000 users and also some futurists and visionaries. And these executives uh, have said that 58% uh, say social mobile analytics and cloud will reduce the barriers to entry into the IT market, not only the people that is keen to these uh, uh, strategies or to these technologies. And 69% believe that these new technologies will increase the competition and will also keep increasing it in the next five years. And 41% expect that the competition will come not only from the industry that they deal, that they work, but also from other industries, and also because of the cooperation of these industries with partners that also are uh, enablers of these new trends for that corporation. So this is the way that they perceive it at this moment. And of course, it's open platform 3.0 standard, which is collecting all these trends and you know about it probably, about these initiatives, and we will talk much more, of course, about Open Platform 3.0 in this summer. And this is also the result of the enterprise ecosystem reference model that is being used at the Open Platform 3.0. And Open Platform 3.0 is uh, the result of previous, uh, previous trends in which we have a common application environment which would avoid to be locked to a operating system from one single vendor, and then we have common services environment in the service-oriented uh, era in which we have universal deployment and access to services and all these business-to-business collaborations. And now we are in this common architecture environment in which I have integrated solutions and it's one step forward in the cooperation between companies. So Open Platform 3.0 is, of course, marking the path of how we can adopt these strategies and these trends. And now let me show you one approach of how enterprise architecture can start dealing with these with this, uh, disruptive technologies. So and this is just one approach, one approach which has uh, several transformation views. And we have this top-down transformation view, which is dealing basically with these three concepts, the concept of transformation in the organization, the concept of business perspective, and the, co the concept of a strategic planning. And then we have, in many situations, when we go to customers, of course, a bottom-up approach, a bottom-up approach where we have projects running like crazy, which are trying to adapt some of these technologies, some of these trends into a tactical approach. And we have, of course, a lower-level infrastructure approach. And then we have a meet in the middle, which is probably the most interesting one, which is joining these uh, two transformation views into uh, the one that is going to start dealing with enterprise architecture and with innovation. So let me just dip down a little bit on this. Uh, from the top-down uh, view, we have the organizations and planning for value. So this is when you have to go to customer and ask yourself a question of how is the enterprise organized for transformation? How is it going to work with a, a potential corporate transformation group? How are the responsibilities split? Where do they have uh, people that is really dealing with these higher level strategies? And you need to get close to them and help them define their strategic direction with a CAMS focus or SCIM focus. And you need to start telling them how they need to start considering these uh, tendencies from the very beginning and from this strategic transformation. 
And then you have also to ask yourself, how is the company business plan for transformation? How is the business drivers, implications for analytics, for mobile, for social, uh, if they have created a comes viewpoint or if analytics uh, is also transformation, this transforming this information into insights for their business planning. And you also have to be there to know all the details and to find out with documents which initiatives or which projects have already been funded or if they are planned or if they will be funded in the next uh, year or if they can consider at the same time strategic and tactical approaches. So this is the kind of things that the enterprise architect has to deal with and has to find out when they reach this uh, group in the top-down organizations, in the top-down view, transformation view. And then from the bottom up, we had projects and we had infrastructure. With projects, you have uh, to find what are the business capabilities and the requirements. We, you have to find if in the business view they have these camps uh, strategies already, and if the technical view uh, that is dealing with those projects, they have a camps strategy, and if they have a new business view because they realized in the middle of the project that they have to add these capabilities, and they say, okay, uh -huh, we need to do this, and we need to maybe spin this part of the project and do something different. And then you have to deal with the process, with the business process scope, and you have to know what are the activities and what are the events that this business process is going to, to create, and you have to realize if they have some of these capabilities, of CAMS capabilities, and you have to make sure that the business rules that you are creating also are uh, creating these new capabilities for these new trends within the corporation. And then, of course, you go down to the real design, to the design of diagrams, to the design of architectural overviews. And you have to find in those designs where it comes, where are the APIs that you are interacting with, maybe within the same uh, groups or within different groups of the corporation or within different corporations. You have to find these characteristics if there is any so that you can influence them. And with all these interactions that you may have in the different groups that may be working together or maybe working isolated, you can find this project synergy that will lead to these ad advanced characteristics. And the other bottom-up approach is the approach of the infrastructure, the approach in which you have uh, a way to leverage cloud initiatives with the infrastructure that you have, leaving all the, all the past where you had uh, static infrastructures, and you have also to find out how you can modernize or how you can migrate uh, the old stuff from the legacy environment. And you also have to find out if you need units that demand a rapid delivery of applications, a rapid deployment of these applications, and you have to start telling them about the DevOps mode of development and testing applications. And you have, of course, to widespread the security that you had up until now within the boundaries of your corporation and because of that, you need to be able to identify and to guarantee the access of many users to all these new applications that they are accessing from anywhere or from any application in any site. And you have to be able to cope with the vulnerabilities and the threats that you have been dealing up until now with your uh, physical uh, standards or physical appliances that you had within the limits of your data centers. And of course, you have to be able to uh, provide or enable new service models and, and companies that, are, that were service providers and now they want to be cloud service providers. And you have to help them with patterns and the cloud characteristics that we will see uh, in a few minutes. And then we go to the meet in the middle. Meet in the middle is to find out really if there is a formal team, a formal team company-wide, and we are not just thinking about big corporations, but also about the small and medium-sized corporations, in which you have to collaborate with these formal teams, and you have to establish these strong relationships to establish this enterprise architecture point of view. And maybe it's an opportunity to create a foundation of enterprise architecture, because now we are coming out of this recession, and it's the right time to start thinking and to start uh, making the companies uh, consider these new opportunities under this uh, philosophy of enterprise architecture. At high level, you have to, st to start a strategic architecture overviews because you have to highlight areas for camps, you have to identify and associate areas for camps, and it's good to 
establish uh, these overviews with these enterprise architecture teams? And how many times have we seen opportunities which could be fantastic in many corporations, but we don't find the right uh, people able to collaborate, maybe to integrate and to interact across the different ITs that they have in one same corporation on in, on in uh, similar corporations, and they are still working isolatedly with different strategies. So this is also a great opportunity to start thinking on what they have in the bottom-up approach and what they have in the meet-in-the-middle approach. Let me focus a little bit on meet-in-the-middle, because I consider that this is the glue of these uh, transformational views. So I'm just going to provide you here with a view of different uh, stakeholders. And here you have Gartner. What is Gartner saying in what I mentioned before in the nexus of forces? It says that enterprise architecture is a discipline that can manage and guarantee the success of the execution of the change toward the desired business that we need now with this enterprise transformation. And also at the same time, IDC maturity model of the third platform is uh, something that says uh, succeeding in this transformation will require an enterprise architecture that provides value to all the stakeholders and that will eliminate barriers. And look at the last bullet that we have here. It says that if enterprise architecture had been an option, it's no longer an option from now on and it has to be uh, really mandatory in any IT organization. So what's the IBM point of view in this uh, enterprise architecture transformation that we need uh, right now, from now on? Well, initially, uh, we have seen companies that had their, their own enterprise strategy, and they were trying to adapt that enterprise strategy, the one that they had chosen, and they wanted just to start using it in every project, so they just fired and hoped that everything would run fine. But then you have to open the strategy and you have to open the planning in an enterprise-wide focus and you have to cope also with the specific initiatives that some people were doing probably collaborating with companies from the outside and you have the specific design and implementation. So IBM in, the, in their strategy what they have is a business strategy on one side, an IT strategy on another side and you have these layers that you can see in the middle, the enterprise capabilities the business architecture, the information architecture, and of course, the technology architecture. So you have to be able to deploy and to translate all these layers to the lower levels and to be able to be also aligned with the enterprise strategy. If you think of an analogy, like the analogy that we may use for the cities, uh, the strategy would be the city purpose and the city uh, vision that and the city goals that any uh, major could have for a city at the beginning of their mandate. And you could see that uh, that vision can be translated as in the enterprise architecture in the shape of a city plan. And you would have the transformation of all industrial areas into recreational areas or in the residential areas. And this is the city plan that I have at the beginning of each mandate. And then uh, you have uh, the system design. The system design are the buildings that you build with the business operating environments that you have inherited from the enterprise architecture. Now it's about business innovation and about IT efficiency. And you can see the details of the enterprise architecture of IBM and these pillars that we have built around it and how we are trying now to incorporate the different characteristics of big data, cloud, mobile, and social in each one of these layers. If we take only for a minute enterprise capabilities, for instance, we have different models. The two most important ones could be the strategic capability network model and the strategic component business model. The component business model is basically, in short, a heat map where you take the processes, the processes that uh, are more efficient, and in those processes, you probably deprecate the ones that are not so critical, that are not affecting um, many users within the corporations, and you try to incorporate capabilities of that uh, heat map of cloud analytics, mobile and social to that model. And then you have another important capability uh, model, which is the strategic capability network model, documenting these enterprise capabilities. They see it in detail, for instance, the strategic capability 
Probability Network has three key components, three main components, which is the value proposition, which is what a company needs to be in order to differentiate from the, from the competitors and to add value to the market. And you have business capabilities, which is what a company needs to do in order to achieve that value proposition. And then you have resources, which are the capability enablers. And that's what a company needs to have in order to deliver these capabilities. So with this strategic capabilities network, what we are trying to do now is for the resources, we try to define CAMS resource capability enablers. So we are trying to see if in those resources we have applications that can be software as a service enabled, that can be marketing websites or can incorporate marketing website analytics, and that can have social collaboration or, or the applications, not only applications, but it could be other types of resources that could be accessible via mobile services, for instance. Another point of view is, from IBM, our client value method. Our client value method is the strategy that we use to go to every opportunity in the market. And we see that here uh, we have five stages, and these five stages uh, will start from left to right, from the time which we understand the client business to the right in which we confirm that we have implemented and we have completed the project and that we have added value to the customer and better experiences. So this is our client value method from each point, from any point of view, even from the sales point of view. And from the enterprise architecture point of view, what we create is an architecture based in a framework. This framework is a spin of our main model, our main universal architecture model, which is called Team Solution Design. So Team Solution Design is provided for the client value method, a specific deliverables. And these deliverables need to be, as you can see, at least in the first and most important uh, phases. So what we are doing now is that we are incorporating characteristics of cloud, of big data, of social and mobile, to each one of these deliverables that we consider like a puzzle, so that we cannot Oops, sorry. Um, that we cannot um, avoid. This is like a puzzle in which we need to provide business directions and we need to provide system context and we need to be able to create architectural decisions and we need to have, uh, for instance, non functional requirements before we can create a well defined component model or a well defined uh, operational model. So now let me give you just an example of how this enterprise transformation architecture is doing solutioning and we, how we can go down all the way to the nitty gritty of the, of the transformation with one of these trends. For instance, let's take cloud solution design. With cloud solution design, of course, many customers come to us and they say that they want to come with requirements of revenue and with requirements of cost. Requirements of revenue, because they want to provide more innovation to their corporations with cloud. They want to provide more business agility. They want to get to more customers to, to bigger markets. They want to increase business volumes with these moves. They want to improve the quality of the service they provide to their customers. And of course, they want to increase customer retention. And they want to avoid some of the, the ways that they lose customers in many ways. And also, you have cost drivers. These cost drivers uh, is because probably this is one of the main goals. They want to reduce costs. They want to improve the asset utilization because they want to know that they can be homogeneous in their platforms. And this will improve also the way they can respond to, to incidents and many other ways in which they can also reduce the, the, the problem with the asset management. And they want to reduce the risk. They want to be able to, as I said before, cope with all the threats that they may find in their infrastructure, in, in their environments, in the current environments. And they want to be able to respond, of course, to local, to government, to industry regulations. And they want to be able to be, and they want to be ready to, to, to respond to business controls and to auditing. So this is more or less all the drivers that all customers that we see uh, need when dealing with cloud and when we have to build cloud solutions for them. And one important thing, and this is 
something critical is that they need to understand what are the actors, the type of actors that uh, this enterprise falls under. Because uh, it's uh, still surprising to see how many customers need a cloud solution, but they don't have a clear uh, vision of the, the actor and the types of role associated with these actors that uh, they need to play. So they don't know if they want to be uh, cloud consumers or cloud providers or cloud brokers. These three highlighted here are probably the three most important ones. And they need to know that at some point in time they need to respond to their customers, but they need to, to act at one time with being cloud consumer or being cloud creator of services, cloud provider of services, or they need to be cloud uh, service brokers in which they consume some services and they provide uh, services also to other customers. It is very important that they know exactly which of these roles they want to play at some point in time. And also, they need to understand that they need to be aligned with cloud service models and the next generation, the so-called next generation cloud architecture. And you can see the three service uh, uh, layers here. And you can see that the open uh, operating environment in the right uh, needs to be aligned with each one of these service models so that you need to keep adding abstraction levels of cloud solutioning to each one of the applications that you want to be, to each one of the transformations that you want to do with the infrastructure. So these that you can see in the lower part are the standards of a cloud operating environment and a cloud uh, generation architecture. Also, it's important to know about workloads. When you go to a customer and you want to deal with a cloud solution uh, from the very first time with a white paper on the table, you need to be able to analyze if these waves of uh, workloads uh, are clear for the customer. You need to know if they can really, in the first wave, change or not some applications, or which ones may be uh, probably ready for cloud uh, transformation, and the ones that probably are ready for cloud transformation because we have patterns and we have standards that can be transformed. So this is something that you need to identify from the very beginning, also as a necessary step. And of course, we as architects rely in reference architectures. We have cloud computing reference architecture in IBM. It has been around for some time already. Now we are in release 4.0. And this reference architecture is structured in pillars related with the cloud actors that you have seen before, and also in operating systems uh, processes, and also in business support services and the service layers that you have seen before. But what we take from this generic uh, framework is a set of patterns, a set of patterns depending on the, on the role, depending on the actor that you want to play there. And for each of these patterns, we uh, create particular deliverables. Like I mentioned before, uh, we have uh, deliverables, for instance, for cloud use cases. And the cloud use cases is important deliverable because uh, we are able to create these transformation paths from from the from one role to the end uh, and the way in which these uh, actions and the way in which these activities are crossing from one human actor to one system actor from the beginning to the end and we know exactly how many uh, transactions are taking place in these transitions and with these well defined cloud use cases for instance we are also impacting in the other trends architectures that we may be creating within a corporation. We are also impacting in big data analytics architectures, and we are also impacting in the DevOps uh, architectures that we may be creating within our corporation and uh, the rest of the ecosystems of this uh, uh, digital transformation. Also, if you adopt a, a method, a methodical approach, you have or you can take two paths. It's the path for optimization and the path for innovation. And these two paths uh, depart from one application portfolio in which you assess all the set of, of, of business processes and applications that you have in your corporation. And then you are able to analyze and rationalize all these applications. And if you choose the path for optimization and considering the workloads that I told before, you have candidates for migration with no significant modernization in which you can do, depending on the complexity, uh, one or other type of migration, rapid migration, or maybe a replatform or reinstalling, depending on the way that you want to, or the deployment model that you want to deal with. And then if 
you have a clear set of applications that are ready for modernization, that are ready for rewriting, and also if you have inputs of cloud-enabled applications, cloud um, applications that are probably going in the DevOps stage or in the DevOps mode of, of deployment, you will see that you can also create a new set of, of transforming applications in one of these deployment models that you see on the right. You have private, uh, private cloud applications, public cloud applications, and hybrid cloud applications that will be interacting with traditional applications in a hybrid IT mode. Okay, so uh, very fast, what I want to say here is that you need to take a holistic enterprise architecture approach with you can see in the left side all the cloud characteristics that most customers are demanding, cloud-enabled data center, modernize the current landscape, plan for new applications, and so on. And of course, you want to see after that transformation the advantages that you see on the right. It's important that at the end of the tour you are able to lower the TCO, to reach higher operational efficiency, and of course, to be able to get to the market faster and to enter new markets. Let me show you just briefly here uh, one of the patterns that we use in the private cloud uh, pattern, which is called CEDC, Cloud Enabled Data Center pattern. And you can see here that uh, this pattern has different layers, which are called macro patterns. And these layers go from lower to higher capabilities. And this is the way in which we approach from uh, short to, to, to high uh, maturity model uh, in cloud computing. So inside with this, each one of these layers, inside each one of these uh, macro patterns, we have components which you need to fill with names and surnames within your corporation, which means that you need to add the software, the hardware, and the appliances that will complete your solutioning model for cloud and will be able to provide you the full picture of the model integrated with your traditional architecture. The same goes for the same pattern with the enablement of platform as a service application. You see here that the components change, the layers do not change, the same macro patterns stay, but you have, for instance, components of actual scaling, components of application testing, components of cloud parking. So you, you can complete the picture depending on the initiative of the service model that you want to deploy. And now let me show you how we go down to the real design because we need to go all the way. So we need to use, as enterprise ar ar architects, we need to use tools. These tools, they have something that is very important for the, for the result of the whole enterprise design, which is consistency. So consistency has to be kept in all the process because it will guarantee the success of, of the glue that I was talking about, of the meeting the middle uh, transformational view. And to keep this consistency, it is very important to use common elements, common modeling concepts that are the ones that have been depicted here in this meta model. So in these enterprise architecture tools, we need to have definitions, we need to carry information, uh, we need to use diagrams, we need to use symbols and relationships uh, joining them. So all the definitions and all the properties and all the diagrams, they make up the model and they keep the consistency and they guarantee that if we change a relationship, that if we change a definition or if we change a diagram, that will impact in the rest of the elements that we have been depicting in the enterprise model. So with this meta model, we can go to work in the customers with a tool. For instance, in IBM, we use some tools and one of these is Rational System Architect. Rational System Architect, as you can see here, uh, depicts uh, this uh, canvas where we have uh, the diagrams and we start depicting the diagrams depending on the type of definitions that we have been creating and also in every uh, definition we can represent different symbols so that we can create the whole uh, enterprise architecture model. But to do this in practical way, what we use is one framework, one enterprise architecture framework, and we can incorporate to Rational System Architect, Doga Framework, or Doda Framework, or Sackman Framework. And in this case, we have a particular framework adapted for cloud solutioning, which is client value method, like I mentioned before, and we use the framework of team solution design for Rational System Architect. And with this, 
we are able to create, to start creating the different uh, deliverables. For instance, you can see here an architectural overview diagram, which is the functional view, and you can see the macro patterns that I represented before, and you can see the components that uh, uh, we had in the theoretical uh, model that I represented before, and you can see that with the different definitions that we create and the different uh, actors that we create, we can represent all the model and then we can also try to complete all the deliverables for all these uh, for all these cloud solutions. And it's very important also, last but not least, that we are able to report and publish all the results that we get from this model. Because we will need to inform our organization and the different stakeholders of the periodic advantages that we are creating. So it's very important that we can show them in de facto standards and also we can uh, create a static or dynamic views so that we can represent the model in the way that is progressing in the same way that we are showing uh, our city council the way that we are building this, the different uh, city buildings or the different recreational areas buildings or the enterprise strategy that I talked before. And of course these tools, they need to use uh, capabilities so that they can interact with different uh, standards with other tools so that we can create a conglomerate that puts everything together in the enterprise transformation, maybe also for the other trends in which we also have different reference model for enterprise architecture tools. So this is all and let's see what can we collect from what I have been talking today. Uh, today's digital business demands an integrated approach. Um, we need to provide this integrated approach for this enterprise transformation. And of course, this enterprise transformation relies on open group standards. Open group is marking the way in which we can adopt all this transformation. And this enterprise transformation strategy is also the one that IBM has chosen. IBM, IBM enterprise strategy is aligned with the open group standards. And this enterprise uh, transformation has to follow solutioning framework and these solutioning frameworks are the, disrupt the ones from disruptive uh, trends like our cloud computing reference architecture. So we need as architects for the open group to rely on enterprise architecture tools and these enterprise architecture tools have to be open, open to represent and to report with open standards. So this is as much as I wanted to tell you today and I am ready for questions if you have them at this moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let me just introduce our CTO, Dave Lounsbury, who will ask the question. Thank you. Excellent presentation. So let me ask first, have uh, you implemented the uh, open group uh, standard for uh, Archimate or do you use the open group standard uh, Archimate for modeling in your uh, tool set? Not, not yet. Uh, we are considering on using Archimate in the same way that we are using Toga, but uh, in the delivery projects uh, organization that I am uh, participating participating at this moment, we have not uh, yet had a chance to use Archimate, but of course we are considering it as a very important approach. So in your slides you showed a, a path for optimization and a path for innovation. Do you see these as in any way mutually exclusive or can they be best operated simultaneously? Uh, from an enterprise architecture point of view, of course, they are not exclusive. I mean, uh, it depends on the amount of initiatives that you have at some point in time. And as enterprise architects, of course, of course we, we have to consider them in parallel. If you are lucky enough to be participating in a, corpora in a corporation that has all these initiatives, for instance, you may have a DevOps initiative in which you have, of course, to adopt the path for modernization and in which you can convince how to reduce the path or, or the life cycle path or as to go to deploy the applications in a faster way. And uh, many other initiatives, maybe even within the same corporation, will be based strongly 
the ideal situation would be to have them simultaneously working together to modernize the whole sets of the business uh, applications of the business processes within an organization. But uh, as at least here in our uh, environment in the south of Europe, I haven't been able to see it by myself. That's true. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to combine a couple of questions here. Apologies to the audience if I've munged these in any way. So um, what do you see as the main challenge to maintain or manage the new IT environment? And how will uh, central IT groups and large organizations maintain oversight and control on IT uh, cost, risk, et cetera? And uh, where do you see standards for the operation of IT coming into play for that? OK. Uh, well, the, the main thing is that uh, at least uh, up until now, I don't think that uh, this transformation has been adopted uh, fully and deeply into the corporations. So what I think is that uh, it's not only a matter of uh, standards, it's, only, it's also a matter of how we deal with the transformation of many units within a corporation. It's about the way in which we really can make corporations understand about the strategical approach with, it, with these digital and disruptive forces rather than going uh, only for a tactical approach. And uh, I think that uh, right now, uh, responding to the second question, uh, the open standards are, of course, uh, in many joint uh, uh, groups that are being created around many situations. Uh, we have uh, open standards around uh, infrastructures, like, like uh, open power standards, and we have open stack, also, which is uh, organization that is creating this cloud adoption uh, map and cloud uh, operating system. And this is uh, a way in which most of the corporations have realized that they need to cooperate, they need to participate, they need to add uh, experts to develop the projects that then every corporation will try to particularize for their own set of products, whatever they are, hardware, software, or appliances. And this is the way that is happening in IBM. IBM has realized that no one is the owner of mobile platform, no one is the owner of analytics, no one is the owner of cloud computing. And we are promoting more and more the participation of employees in these uh, open groups and these open organizations. And of course, we are always very much uh, sensible to uh, standards like the one from NIST or Cloud Security Alliance or Cloud Standards Customer Council, and of course, the open group, because we think that it's very relevant to see how we need to keep evolving all our portfolio or our products and how we need to be able to adapt rapidly to these standards with our products. That's, that's a good point, because in addition to the technical standards you mentioned, like OpenStack, you were starting to see the uptake of you know, more methodology-oriented standards, like what you talked about from NIST, but also, presumably, over time, what's going on in the IT for IT forum at the Open Group. Uh, so on, on your slide 20, um, a reference to your slide 20, um, where and how do you see uh, information security fitting into your, the IBM point of view on enterprise architecture? OK, uh, that's interesting to see because uh, information security uh, at this moment uh, was uh, related with the policies and the layers that we had to be able to cope uh, with the boundaries, as I said before, the boundaries of the the corporation. So we had the different uh, policies and the security governance uh, layer that was surrounding this framework. And now what do I have done in order to cope with an enterprise architecture approach and with the security that this enterprise architecture approach demands is to widen this 
obviously the C-suite execs expect, as you have noted, the uh, usual transformation objectives of both increasing their capability and driving down costs at the same time in this environment where they're facing disruption from external forces like market changes and, and underlying technology changes. Um, what methodologies do you see being used most frequently to make sure that the business strategy for coping with this is aligned with the, uh, the uh, IT and operational strategies? And uh, how, do, how do execs see that playing a role in making sure their organization can respond in a timely way to uh, these disruptions? Okay, uh, at least uh, here in the south of Europe, in Spain, in, in the group that IBM is managing in the south of Europe, Portugal, Israel, Greece, uh, what we have seen being used uh, very strongly still uh, up until now is uh, the ideal methodology uh, to cope like uh, in a way of enterprise strategy. And we have now the search of many companies which are using Toga, of course, as the approach to, to respond. And they start thinking, what, what I don't see yet is how these companies are, are linking a Toga approach, which uh, they have specific groups within their corporations, uh, of course, to develop uh, enterprise strategies and how these groups are dealing with uh, the camps strategies that they are starting to see. Because uh, what I see is isolated approaches, not altogether as a disruption of forces, like we have mentioned before. We have groups that are doing inside corporations, cloud, cloud solutioning. We have, of course, groups that are turning uh, business innovation uh, solution and business innovation opportunities into analytic opportunities, but they are not yet linked with uh, the TOGAF uh, strategy. They are not yet linked uh, together with these disruptive forces. So as I see, there are still many isolated, uh, uh, and depending on the type of organization that you have within that corporation, there are still many isolated groups that are not uh, driven in the way that we have seen in, in, that, in that slide from top down from an enterprise strategy towards the incorporation of that cloud analytics, mobile, and social uh, set of initiatives. So as I have seen now, uh, there are groups still very much focused in, in completing the set of management processes, IT processes within that organization. There are, of course, many groups that are dealing with different, different strategies for business process management. But uh, altogether, I still have not seen it yet here. So one of the great things here is that we're talking to a room of people who are experts at enterprise architecture, business architecture, evolving you know, uh, business models for good operation of IT. W what advice would you give them to, to close that gap? OK, uh, for me, I think the important thing is to keep pushing this, uh, this uh, mind share of, of being able to link a the, the source of enterprise architectures in a corporation, if they are present, or if, as I said before, there is as an opportunity to work with the specific groups in these terms of, of these four disruptive forces, because uh, the four of them, and also Internet of Things, is also one that we need to consider very specifically. And in particular, IBM is considering cloud analytics, mobile, social, Internet of Things as a new unit that has been created just a few weeks ago with an important investment, and also security. In, in IBM, we have cloud analytics, mobile, social, and security as part of our strategic transformation. And what we are trying to do from the executive point of view is to 
computing reference architecture, which we would love uh, to become uh, also uh, what IBM uses there, 